So, mm, so we're talking about the misconceptions that people have about Nigeria. That's what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. Yes. And not so, even just people, just more like my generation of Nigerians, because like I explained to you before, like we've been blessed to have gone to Nigeria like six times so far, mm -hmm. you know, whereas a lot of people have never gone. And so they're left with the ideas that they get from like school or TV or even like just stories from parents and sometimes it's a little bit exaggerated. So, you know, like it, it's an experience like once you actually go. Yeah. So it is because, you know, like I'll um, come in and say, you know, like whenever people think about Nigeria, I mean, I know you're talking about your generation, but and then um, Americans too, you know, whenever they um, think about Nigeria, the first thing they think about is poverty. They're thinking about poverty. They're thinking about sickness. You know, and it's just like it's just a place that you just have to donate um, something to, and that's um, yeah, I'm, and, you know, yeah, and that ignorance isn't their fault, though. You know what I'm saying? Like you, that's what is implanted into your head. Like whenever you're younger in school and you're looking through history yeah. books and stuff like that, like that's what you see. That's what you see on TV and stuff. So I mean, I you can't really be upset at them. So. Mm -hmm. You just have to educate people. Educate yeah. people. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. So, so we're going to start actually by um, letting you, I guess, maybe like educate some people, you know, about um, your experiences. Let's talk about your experience, you know, like going to Nigeria. Do, do you remember the first time you went? You know, actually, what it's actually like? kind of funny because I have like a great memory so i literally remember all the times that we've gone so mm -hmm. the first time we went was probably in 2000 it mm -hmm. was just me linda blessing my mom my dad didn't go and jocelyn wasn't born yet and okay. we literally stayed the entire summer and i believe that was probably one of my most favorite times that we've gone because during that time like the whole kidnapping stuff wasn't like it wasn't rampant back then, you know, like we were able to just be free and just walk around the compound and stuff like that. And um, yeah, so we were there the entire summer and um, it was just fun because it was our first time going to meet all your aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody. So it was really just a fun time. Okay, so I mean, I know you're saying it was a fun time and everything. So, but how did you feel? I'm just saying, you know, like uh, being, um, I mean, your parents are Nigerians, but you were actually born here. So you've never been before. Mm -hmm. So you've probably had stories or maybe you haven't had any story, but you are just going in, you know, into an unknown country. Very cool. Very cool. Never yeah. been, how was it? Yeah, we went in blind. Like, you know, yeah. so of course, I was, believe I was like eight, seven, I was seven. And um, of course, like my conception of Nigeria, like, I just remember believing like, there's just like jungles and like, you know, just a whole bunch of trees. So, like, the first place we went to was Lagos. And that's mm -hmm. where we stayed for like the first half of the summer. Mm -hmm. And of course, Lagos City. And so like, I was just, kind of dumbfounded when I first, you know, walked off the plane. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. You know, like it was, it was cool. Like it was like cities and buildings. And of course it's not, it wasn't, this is 2000. So it wasn't as advanced as it is now, but yes. it just wasn't what I expected either. You know, it was an experience for sure. And so wow. and the, the latter part of the summer is when we went to, uh, the country was the village. And mm -hmm. I believe that was when I had the most fun because like we were just, this, our house wasn't even built yet. So we stayed at our grandfather's house. And so mm -hmm. like when you're a little kid, like everything 
there are no big problems there are no big deals everything is yeah. uh, games and everything and so literally we would just be running around with our cousins like the entire time just playing cards like mm -hmm. it was just i don't know it was just fun of course i was born there grew up there lived there before i came here so i would say it is you know like uh those things that um we actually miss because even right now the kids actually don't have it anymore mm -hmm. you know like when when i was growing up we used to you know like uh, run around you know like with the sand you know like everything and like you said there was no kidnapping or mm -hmm. or anything or anybody going in with oh i have to go in with um security, security and stuff like that and stuff like that so we didn't have that we just had life you know like at night how we would just come out um i think um gosh i don't think my grandfather was i don't know i think he was probably alive but we'll just come out with the light there's something like uh, it used to be cold mm -hmm. and then they will you know kind of like uh, put on lights like a burn light outside like wood and make it light and we'll just sit around it you know like singing Oh, that's what we did for New so Year's. That's fun. what we did for New Year's and Christmas every because we now we go during uh, Christmas time because everybody's busy during the summer. And so for Christmas and New Year's, that's literally what we do too. Oh, so you guys still do that? Mm -hmm. still that? Oh, because wow! We're, in, we're in the village whenever it's Christmas and New Year's, and mm -hmm. so that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Christmas used to be fun. I, we used to, you know, like, I, I mean, because now you just say Christmas, and I just remember Christmas used to be where we just, you know, like, uh, the food is cooked in one house. Mm -hmm. So it's like one person cooks the food, and then everybody brings their plates, and we line it up. And you get your own food so it was like i think that was when you know i can say we had unity yeah you know it's like it was everybody was kind of like united nobody was afraid of oh this person is gonna poison me or do that so it's like they would just you just bring your we were eating from the same pot yeah so that was actually the fun part of it you know, when I remember that, I'm like a God, you know, and I miss it, you know. So it's like when people talk about, you know, like Nigeria and, they, and you know, most people will say, oh, gosh, you know, they are afraid to go because they're just thinking it's, oh, well, like, we like, do have that. It's, it's just a jungle, but yeah, for sure. not for really. There, there are there are bad parts, of course, but. There are bad parts in like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Bad parts of Dallas, bad parts of, you know, like Raleigh, Garland, like there are bad parts of everywhere, you know? But I, I don't know. It, whenever we go, I honestly just appreciate like, A, appreciate the fact that, you know, parents sacrifice so much just to come to the States, you know, and provide a life for us. But also like just grateful and thankful for having the opportunity to go and experience that because a lot of people can't say that at least not say that gone like six times you know so mm -hmm. yeah and i think it is a good thing so that's what you know i'm just hoping you know like uh people can people that haven't been or people that haven't taken their children you know they get to go and then see that it's not really you know what um people painted out here to be that's not what it's like Oh, you have everything cool. except even when um nepa i don't know if you know what that is yeah, take the light we still have generators <laughs> so, so <laughs> i know yeah so we still have you know we still have generators yeah oh yeah we do. Sure. like everybody yeah. uses generators everybody even mm -hmm. like people in like the big houses that have like our aunt auntie joy like she has like this huge house that has like elevators in it or whatever, but she still uses mm -hmm. generators. You know, everybody uses generators. It's actually funny because this last time that we went, um, 2017, right? Mm -hmm. Christmas 2017. Um, that's when our dad got Wi-Fi into the house. 
but the Wi-Fi isn't like the Wi-Fi that we use in the States. So it's not like a constant thing. It like you, <laughs> you have to oh. of the amount of time that you have on it because the juice will run out. And then you have to go and put money back onto that card so that like you can like refill the um Wi-Fi little box thing, right? And it's funny because the juice runs out so quickly because of course our generation, like we're phones, iPads, computers, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so there's all of us in the house and we're trying to like stay connected on social media and stuff like that. And so we're like, okay, we can only be on it for 30 minutes right now. Yeah. Nobody yeah. else get on it, right? Yeah. And so <laughs> it's so funny because we would be downstairs and let's just say Josh is upstairs. And we would know that he's using the Wi-Fi box without telling us because we would start getting all these notifications. <laughs> and we're like, Josh, turn it off! <laughs> because that was probably the worst, my worst part about going to here was the Wi-Fi because yeah. we're like a huge like sports family, right? So we watch basketball, we watch football, whatever. And so during the Christmas time is when a lot of the important like basketball games are on or football or whatever. And we cannot connect to watch it. We can't connect to get updates. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. And it's just so frustrating. But like, I mean, we get home and we, you know, update ourselves on the scores and stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, other than that, like, I honestly love the experience. Like literally, um, we stay in the village most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the village, our dad built like this, you know, like this great house and all of our cousins, our aunts and uncles or whatever. And they're always like just in the living room and we're always literally playing cards. Literally all we yeah. do was play cards, playing like spoons. And <laughs> you try playing spoons with Nigerians, it gets so aggressive. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Which one is that? Which one is spoons? Okay, so I know about what you have. You have card like you have like um, four cards, and you're basically passing cards until you have like four matching, um, like four eights or four fours mm -hmm. or whatever. And so you're passing cards, and then you have spoons on the table. And whenever you have, well, whoever has like four cards first, you grab a spoon, and then everybody has to go and grab that spoon. Whoever doesn't have a spoon is out. And so oh. Nigerians were very, very competitive. And so yeah. we're literally rolling on the floor, fighting over the spoon. <laughs> Just to get it. It, was, it, it got crazy, but like literally it made time go by quickly. And like, it was just something that we did, like whenever Napa would take a light or something, we would literally just have flashlights and just start playing cards or whatever. And like, uh, then like come back on and you know, the time passes, like you just, you have to make your own experiences whenever you go. Like oh, exactly. the experience that you have in Nigeria is what you make it. You know, if you um, are just constantly like in your room or something all day, then of course you're not gonna have a good time. Yeah, like, you exactly. have to go out and you know talk to people. And luckily for us, like our compound, like literally, again, big family, and so we have like cousins maybe not our age but like maybe they're like a little older but we've known them for years and so mm -hmm. like literally we're just like talking talking about just having conversations or whatever and it's just i don't know it's just fun yeah. well that's good nigerian um experiences i guess so we talk about so we are trying to tell people that um the misconceptions you have about nigeria yeah it's so it's really true it's what you make it, yeah. like, so no just go out there and uh see what it is like mm -hmm. yeah like, in nigeria like you have like clubs you have like beaches i didn't even know that they had there are beaches there and so yes, our yes, cousins, yes, and stuff, and i'm just like oh More like you know what i'm saying like you have to go More out beaches, and yes you have to go out and venture out and like it can really be a fun experience like i have some friends who literally probably go to nigeria like every single year you know mm -hmm. it's something that like they absolutely love and adore and i know uh, people your age too that started now they go by themselves they just get up and go we, we have to work like, our way up to that i don't think <laughs> i could go to nigeria haven't gotten there yet. just yet because I know I don't have the patience to deal with. 
have the patience to deal with the no, airport drama and all of that. So we're going to work our way up to that. But, you know. Yeah. I know. Well, thank you for talking to me.